Sean here, Most of the Metal. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, today is going to be the February edition of my Metalhead Tote Box Unboxing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, for those who have never seen this before, you know, you probably heard what the Metalhead Box is, where they send you a box every month. It's like a subscription service, and you get a few goodies, metal goodies, in your box. I have an old tote that I have. Right here filled with my own metal goodies from the past flyers catalogs and god knows what else is in here um so i'm gonna do an unboxing of sorts every month of this hope you guys enjoy that uh, first i wanted to give a shout out to nasty racks um i got this in the mail uh, a week or so ago you can see their logo there uh, this guy's name is um, Lucas Fountainberg. He's known as Rusted Winds, W-I-N-D-S, on um, Instagram. Uh, you can buy these. I believe he still has some for sale. This holds, I think, a hundred cassettes. And he has some that will hold uh, 80, I believe, a smaller size. Um, he does a nice little burn-in on both sides. But um, I'll link below to his big cartel. Um, he also does a black metal tape trading thing where you can just sign up for it and um, he'll assign you a, a person to trade tapes with if you can dub tapes uh, and put some black metal on there. Uh, I, I don't have a dubber, a tape player, um, way to dub tapes or else I join in. So um, support him, support the independent artists as much as you can down below. And we're going to jump right into the tote. I'm doing like a blind pull here, so if I don't know some of the stuff, I apologize. Uh, this, okay, so this is a series of emails, it looks like, that I kept over the years. Um, this is going back to earthlink.net. These emails are from about 21 years ago, it looks like, okay. So I put together a, a Gigi Allen tribute album. Uh, a while ago, well, a long while ago, called Fuck Authority, a tribute to G.G. Allen. I don't know that I even have a copy anymore, um, but I kept all the emails that some of the bands um, sent me one of, of note here. You can see, maybe, maybe not. Um, that's an email from Jeff Clayton from Anti-Scene. Um, I used his uh, a picture that he had of G.G. Allen's gravestone uh, on the cover. And I reached out to him for permission. Um, I think I've got something in here from, probably from Merle, I'm sure, asking Merle's permission. And this was back before uh, the internet and all that fun stuff. So yeah, this is one from Merle, I think. Or, um, I just wanted to reach out to Merle and say, hey, uh, it, he kind of runs G.G. Allen's estate, I guess you would call it. Uh, so there's a email from Merle. He doesn't live there anymore. I think obviously that was 20 some years ago. But I just wanted his permission. He didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for anything. I'm sure I'm, well, I'll guarantee I'm not the only person that's done a G.G. Allen uh, tribute album before, but um, this was back when the internet was just kind of starting out. Uh, there was no Spotify or anything like that, so um, paying Merle anything I made made off of this. I didn't make any money off this. It was just out of pure joy. Um, I just wanted him to know about it, and he could have said, hey, give me some money, but he didn't. So, um, lots of different bands on here. I don't remember all the bands. Some of them said they hung out with um, Gigi in the past. Um, Exploiting, Exploiting State Troopers was a band. Uh, Bashed in the Face. Pope Goat. Um, who else? And I, the way I got this, the way that I did this, is I just reached out to various bands that um, I saw like a GG Allen, I think probably on MySpace, if you old folks remember MySpace, and just said, hey, I see you, your band's done a cover of GG Allen. Um, I was in a band at the time that we did GG Allen covers. Are you interested in, in uh, being on the release? And a lot of bands said yes, so it's pretty cool. My first time ever putting uh, putting anything out. I think I called it Crook Records or something like that. But yeah, it was fun. Brett 
Denon so much more CD. I don't know why I have this. Oh, I think I do. Now, yeah, let's see. So it has a punch-out coat on it. I think this is... Um, so I was on a street team type thing. If you don't know what a street team is or, or was, I doubt they have them anymore. Um, you could reach out to record labels and say, hey, I will go to my local record store and help promote your releases, and they would give you free stuff. Um, you would take, like, they would send you posters and shit, and you would go to your local record store and say, hey, I'm street team for Bloodshot Records, let's say. Um, I've got these posters, would you mind putting them up? And most record stores say, yep, no problem. Um, here's some promos, here's this, here's that. Um, so I did that for a little bit, just as kind of a, a fun thing to do, but that was a pretty popular uh, way for smaller labels to get their stuff recognized in record stores. Um, they would just give you some free stuff on the side and let you do their um, some of their heavy lifting for them. So pretty smart idea. And dig way down in here. This is a purple bag with a roll of toilet paper in it. Should have found this during the uh, pandemic. Some other plastic shit in it. Okay, I know what this was from. Um, so I saw... Yeah, this is ringing the bell. I saw Typo Negative at the Milwaukee Metal Fest. Um, this thing says uh, free CD. Yeah, you can't really see it. Um, and they, um, at the end of their set, they came out for the Encore. I don't know why I kept this, to be honest. Um, I just remember the purple bag and the toilet paper. Um, and Typo Negative came out for their last song. And before they played their last song, or maybe second to last song, they came out with a shit ton, no pun intended, of toilet paper. And what they did is the band, the crew, um, everyone just started winging toilet paper at the crowd. And the crowd would take the toilet paper and wing it back at typo negative. And by the time they were done TPing the crowd and the crowd was done TPing them, it was just like a sea of toilet paper uh, everywhere. And it was... I mean, there was beer and stuff everywhere. Sweat was sticky to it, and it was all over the floor. Uh, I'm sure it was a nice mess uh, for someone to clean up. That was one of the first times I saw a uh, type of negative, so it made quite an impression. Um, this is a tape that someone sent me, a cassette, and it looks like they also put a, a handwritten... Um, note in here um, back, you know, hey, I've been playing in this band since 2000. Um, kind of a weird little note in here, but this was, uh, it looks like a guy, Adam Wolfson from New York, Long Beach. Um, it was his band. Um, it was gave me his AOL information again for the Gigi album. Uh, tribute album. Kept that. I've got various things I won't go through a ton because it's all Crook Records stuff. It was all Gigi Allen um, tribute stuff. This is from a band called Brain Sample. They did uh, Unpredictable and Public Enemy Number One. Uh, I have a few of these in here that I can see. Anyway, here's another one from Harry Balls. <laughs> uh, this has all kinds of stuff in it. Uh, including one of their love love soaks love source uh, filthy fucking records. Uh, I'll show you the back real quick. YouTube won't like that, but interesting. Uh, Kirk Records. I'm gonna go big in here. This is. I don't know if any of you all used to get these. Uh, Relapse Records catalog from 1997. Um, Release was a another like a branch of Relapse that was kind of like their weird uh, obscure stuff. Uh, this is kind of like what the inside of the catalog would look like. You would have to go through and mark in the catalog what you wanted. Uh, and you can see the prices in there. There was some advertising uh, as well. 
Um, a typical relapse CD was $12 back then. Um, Abscess, Year and Junkies uh, was $12. Anal Cunt and Wilbur Forest was only $7. Uh, but yeah, they would send you these uh, <coughs> catalogs in the mail. And you could order straight out of the catalog and send them um, money, check, money order. Um, they would take um, cash if you were brave enough to send cash through the postal service. Um, but I loved <clears throat> getting these catalogs. It was like Christmas for me when these would come in the mail. Um, I would sit down with it and I would go through each band and I would mark which one sounded interesting to me. Um, the, the description of each band mattered a lot because, again, in 97, there wasn't a lot of outlets for me to um, listen to music, so pretty cool. This one, we're going back to 1995. <clears throat> this is a Century Media catalog with uh, the order form on the inside um, telling you you know what you uh, what to buy, how much everything was, how to order, all that fun stuff. They did. They actually printed. What I liked about Century Media is their catalogs were smaller, but some of the T-shirts and stuff they would do color pictures. You can see some grave down here. Grief. Um, this Mayhem shirt was pretty popular. The pure Norwegian black metal shirt. Um, Century Media was uh, kind of a label that was all over the place for me. Personally, I'll show you some of the insides here. Um, some of the stuff they put out I really liked, and then they put out stuff like um, like Stuck Mojo and um, some other crap that Mucky Pup I was not a fan of. Uh, but then they put out like some Ace Fix and Mayhem and stuff like that. And again, we couldn't listen to this stuff back then, so if you liked Grave, for example, which I did and you knew, hey, that's on Century Media, um, and you would go pick up uh, an album, let's see, 454 Big Block, Your Jesus. Um, you would go pick that up and at the record store, oh, it's on Century Media, it's probably pretty good. Not so much, in my uh, opinion. Um, so it was hard to dig through the good and the bad. Back in the day, you would end up spending half your paycheck on stuff, and, and some of it was just dog shit. And of course, you could turn around and go back to the record store, and they would gladly uh, buy it back from you and sell it used. So there's a lot of the bands that were on the label. Here's the, the front and the back of the catalog. Kind of cool to go back through some of these and see, you know, wow, if I bought that CD back in the day, it would be worth about 50 bucks. Uh, try not to look at anything here. This is another relapse catalog from 1996. I'll show you how old it was. Um, it has an advertisement for Neurosis on the back here for Through Silver and Blood in stores now. Um, great album, by the way. But this is, I won't show it too much. This is actually very similar to the one I just showed. But again, it's all the order forms or the prices, and you can order and and whatnot so yeah interesting stuff i like keeping this kind of stuff just because you don't get them anymore this is looks like it's called maximum inc wisconsin's music magazine for fans and musicians i probably got this it says 2005 is the date and um, that's obviously iron maiden on the cover uh, but this is like an advertisement. What would what you would do is get these free papers when you would go to shows, and they would advertise what was coming, and you could start to plot your um, your trip. Like, oh, Social D is coming September twentieth, but Disturbed, if you wanted to see Disturbed, is coming August thirty first. You would have to look at um, where all these folks are playing. Um, a lot of times they advertise Chicago shows in here. Here's an advertisement for uh, Clutch. Up top there, this was before I knew who Clutch was. I was wish I would have went and seen them back when I knew. Some phone sex, too, if you so so inclined to get that. Um, and then they would interview bands here and there in these magazines. They would do some um, interviews, some music reviews, stuff like that. Phone sex. 
if you were so inclined. Uh, I don't know why that was such a big deal back then. Um, and then it was basically just one big advertisement. And obviously, like on the back here, hey, Judas Priest is coming with um, probably no one. I don't see one in three doors down with, <clears throat> excuse me, Stained and Breaking Benjamin. So this is probably a paper I picked up when I was um, going to Milwaukee Metal Fest or something like that. Or I actually went to a show in Milwaukee. That was pretty rare because usually shows would come through Chicago as well as Milwaukee. And they're pretty much right by each other. So I wouldn't have to make the track. Funny story though, if, where I live, it's actually, if you factor in traffic, you can most of the time get to something or somewhere in Milwaukee before you can get to Chicago even though Milwaukee is further north um, from me. True story. Um, this is something called Skull Mag, Skull Session. Not, don't remember this very much. Um, advertisement for Sub-Zero on the back. There's a barcode on here. It says Magazine Skull Mag. Uh, I don't remember where I got this. Someone named... I don't want to put his address on here, but this guy from Ontario sent it to me, looks like. Or it was sent to him. Uh, it's got, this is like a magazine. This is like an old school zine where they would interview um, bands like Slayer. Uh, it was all done in black and white. Apologies for Metal Mikey whining, if you can hear him. My wife left and he's not happy. Happens quite a bit during these videos. Um, little thing with Unwritten Law in here. I'm trying to find some other bands. Some of you may be interested in Speedball. No idea. Looks like this came out in 96. Because here's a little write-up of 96. This time in the, in the 90s, anything that was music-related, I would just grab and, and pick it up. Here's a, a Dealey Bob on Morbid Angel. There's David Vincent there. Uh, before he started wearing cowboy hats. Um, some music reviews in the back again not much to show um, but yeah these magazines and these zines were things you could just usually pick up uh, anywhere you could just say um, hey get, here's five dollars or here's a dollar or two and, and send it in and these folks would send you their zine and I think that's what um, one of what this was looks like issue number 35 This is something from, looks like, um, Metal Disc out of Thousand Oaks, California. This is yet another catalog. And you can see here what I did. It's probably hard to tell. I don't know if you'll be able to see this little dot right here on At The Gates. But I would go through this catalog and anything I was interested in, I would put a little dot um, by it. Slaughter of the Soul. Uh, was this one that's an album I, I might talk about more some other time a lot of people love that album i might be the only person i know that does not love slaughter of the soul i know that's sacrilegious for some of you but um i just i don't know it's i like it but it's not to me it's not oh my god gotta gotta go back to that album over and over and over again it just does not do much for me uh, Marauder, I highlighted Misery Loves Company, Mortis Gold, Sepultura, um, Only Living Witness, great band. Um, Gutted, um, Bleed for Us to Live t-shirt, never did get that. Um, Meshuga, Internal Bleeding, Sinister, these are all bands that I was turned on to um, in, the, in the Milwaukee Metal Fest era when I was diving headfirst into the metal underground. So there's some cassettes in here. You can buy Kerrang! magazine. I know that's a popular, I believe it's a UK magazine. That thing would get imported over here. I, I There was a store that I used to go to. I still have some. Um, someday I'm going to go through my magazines and show you guys. Um, I think I had, um, gosh, what was it? Kerrang! There was another magazine from overseas, I can't remember, but they would charge $9 for those. And this was back 20, 30, this was, no, this was 30, 30 years ago. Um, but I liked magazines because that's where I read about bands and having a UK, um, UK magazine 
you would find out about bands that aren't really covered here in the USA back then. I remember, God, what was the band that was so hyped over there that I could not stand? It wasn't Dogs Day More. It was, uh, oh, God. It'll come back to me one of these days. The, they raved about this band nonstop, and, and I, it, they, it was like they were on the cover four times a year. Um, so, yeah, it was it was interesting time and uh, expensive time. I spent a lot of money uh, back in these days, but, but that's okay. Um, this is so this is from Fat Records. It looks like it's their catalog uh, from 2002, issue number two. So they did like a, a comic book themed catalog, which was pretty cool. Uh, this wasn't mailed to my house. But they would interview, like, Dillinger 4, great, great punk band, if you've not heard Dillinger 4. And they would have some funny cartoons uh, scattered throughout. Fat Records is uh, ran by Fat Mike. Uh, he was in the band, or is in the band, No Effects. Um, there's a deal on Rise Against before they became super popular. Uh, I liked some of Fat Records stuff at the time, the kind of that pop punk uh, type stuff. They did put out some Sick and Ball stuff, too. So I gave him credit for that. I was never a huge No Effects fan. I think I liked, um, was it Punkin Drublick? I think is what it was called. Um, I don't know who keeps hitting up my phone. Um, Strung Out was a, a pretty good band. Turn this fucking thing off. Um, who else was in here that I enjoyed? Um, Swingin' Utters were okay. Um, Screeching Weasel, I liked that. Propagandi was pretty good. Um... No use for a name. Liked them quite a bit. Uh, but they were pretty cheap, if I remember right. Fat Records was. I don't know if they are uh, anymore. The, this is what kind of funny, the back cover. Um, this is what I used to do, other than drinking a soda on the toilet. But I would grab all these catalogs when they came in the mail. Um, and then I would wait. I shouldn't say I would wait. I'd look at them at any time. It was time to do my business. Um, I would take these in, in the in the bathroom instead of regular magazines. So. Uh, this is from acclaimed director Sion Sonu. Why don't you play in hell? This might be a newer postcard that I got. Um, it looks like it says this is um, an action film about the love of 35 millimeter um, on Draft House Films. I don't know if this is a newer release or not but i thought it was kind of cool so i kept it check it out um carbonized records this is a newer um, one i think i've already shown from um looks like isotope and this is dead pressure yeah carbonized great great label check them out go dig it in here some more i'll do a few more of these uh this is a magazine from the Milwaukee Metal Fest 1996. Um, you can see up there it's got Gigi Allen Carnivore, which is um, Pete Steele's band before Typo. Uh, Mayhem, Venom, Cannibal Corpse, um, a couple artist names, I think. Um, advertisement for Mike Hunt Music. Get it, Mike Hunt. Um, there was a guy. Uh, Michael Hunt Publishing, uh, I think he was out of Illinois, actually, maybe not Wisconsin. He came under fire during the Milwaukee Metal Fest. I think there was a free CD that was included in some of the promotional materials in one of the Metal Fests, and I think it was a white power band that he put in there, and he caught a lot of flack um, for that. There's a nice uh, picture of Gigi Allen. Um, doing God knows what. And I think this guy that they interviewed in here, he did write, end up writing a book about Gigi Allen. I'm not sure if it's him or not. There's a picture of uh, Gigi with um, Todd Phillips, the director. Uh, if you don't know Todd Phillips, he directed uh, the Hangover movies. A huge step up from um, Gigi Allen. So um, he did do the documentary called Hated. Um, about Gigi Allen. Very uh, intriguing if you've never watched it. Um, but it's pretty cool to see he used to do these types of documentaries. He did another one about frat houses, I think, called Frat House. Went on to do uh, 
Hangover movies and some other popular stuff. So cool to see his career take off. There's a write up on Carnivore. There's Pete Steele. In the, I think he's in the middle there. Now he's on the far. He's way over here. Pete Steele in his young days. I talked about Carnivore in one of my earlier videos. Um, looks like we have an abortion write up. I don't know why that's in here. Um, kind of weird. Uh, advertising for Pit Magazine. I do have some of those to show you all at one point or another. I want to get around to it. Uh, Voivod advertisement. I'm not going to fit for all these pages. You guys don't want to see all this stuff. Um, a little deal about the Misfits. I did get to see them at the Milwaukee Metal Fest with uh, Michael Graves. That was the, we used to call them the New Fits instead of the Misfits. Uh, they were actually pretty good. I thought his voice um, lended itself well to the Misfits. And that was back when um, Danzig and the rest of the Misfits were at odds. And I think um, Jerry Only and company had to pay Glenn a lot of money to keep on using the Misfits name. And now they all kissed and made up and... Did those reunion shows that were... I went to... I saw one of them at um, Riot Fest in Chicago. The sound was not very good, but it was cool to see the Misfits together. Um, this is a random magazine that I picked up called something about Earth Fest. Um, this is one of those, again, those newspapers that you opened up, and there were all these... Um, advertisements for bands and shows and whatnot. I don't see much of note in here. It was more of just probably a random grab on my part. Record stores would advertise in here too, so you knew which ones were the cool ones. And you could go to. I'm not recognizing any bands in here, though. This is more of a Advertisement for shows coming, so I don't even know where this would have been. Oh, it says Detroit, so I don't remember ever going to shows in Michigan, but I probably did at some point. This is around, looks like 1995. I don't recall ever going to shows in Michigan, but again, I was up in that Milwaukee, Detroit, Chicago vicinity, so you would always get your mitts on various pieces of information. Uh, this here looks like we got a couple of this is a zine that someone slapped together you can see an advertisement for Slayer um, Deaden who were um, actually from my area um, the start of the band Lividity I think came out of Deaden um, this is just something someone would slap together it's put together by Staples and they would just kind of say hey we are doing some black and white print ups of a bunch of stuff uh, this is from 1994 um, this may have been released this was released in the Champaign Urbana uh, area um, section 8 was a, a popular band um, and back here the Silver Bullet and the Five Points Tavern were places where they would actually let death metal bands play I'm trying to see who else is in here. That It was kind of cool to see these bands rise from nothing. But that's, uh, if you see right there, it's, uh, there's Deadens' uh, logo. Uh, I believe Lividity, like I said, came out of that. Desecration was another good band. Section 8 right here um, was another uh, pretty cool band from my area back, back in those days. Uh, this is another, again, local advertisement from uh, my local area. Periscope, CDs, and tapes. I spent, I probably kept that place in business, to be honest. I would skip class, I would skip college class, um, and go um, spend money there. Uh, so this is just another uh, zine, and you could keep track of shows and, and whatnot. But Periscope, I missed Periscope, is a good, good store. And finally, to wrap this one up, this is just some Metal Blade Records catalog. You can see um, Fate's Warning on the front there. Cannibal Corpse. Um, the Bleeding. 
Squar, Screw, Merciful Fate, Epidemic. Great band. That's what the inside would look like. It was just kind of a generic handout. They could print this for pretty much nothing. And that's it. So, that's it for this edition of the uh, monthly tote. Hope you guys enjoy the trip down memory lane. Got a shit ton more stuff to get through. I got a shit ton of CDs in the mail. I've been on a cassette kick lately, but I got a bunch of CDs and vinyl uh, in the mail. So I will be checking that out here um, very, very soon. Hope you guys like these videos. Um, hope you're doing well. And I will catch you all very soon. Later.